substances does in, in fact affect um, another organ or another bodily process or function. And so <clears throat> just to sort of jump right in, your spleen is located, it's about the size of your closed fist, okay? And it's located on the upper left side of your abdomen, the upper left side. And um, it is responsible for things like uh, modulating your immunity, helping to keep your immune system healthy. If you're someone who catches colds frequently or perhaps you um, it takes you a, a long time to recover or something like that, from in the in regards of immunity, that could be an organ that you would definitely benefit from supporting. Um, but it also helps to purify the purify our blood. Uh, that is essential. Um, our liver and our kidneys also help to filter the blood, but the spleen helps to purify it to really keep it clean um, and to keep things moving the way that they should be throughout our body. Um, it also can store blood. So kind of like needing something, like having something there for when you need it or when you might need it, the spleen can store blood and that can be very helpful if your body is ever in a situation where it does need those extra reserves. Um, it is also <clears throat> capable of helping to produce blood cells like bone marrow. Um, again, very essential, but functions that are that are important, but that we don't really talk about or hear about very often. So um, what can we do to care for the spleen? Generally speaking, by supporting your digestive system and your liver, which typically with herbal medicine, we use bit, bitter herbs for, by supporting those um, those systems or those organs with bitter herbs or with herbs that are going to help support your digestion and elimination, you are sort of by default supporting your spleen. <clears throat> so while you may not have been intentional around um, supporting your spleen, chances are you probably have already in some way, shape, or form. So bitter herbs that benefit the gut also benefit the spleen. Um, there are also uh, anti-inflammatory herbs that are very, very beneficial for countless other things, but also for keeping the spleen healthy, for keeping the spleen calm so that it can do its job. And when you think about it, anything that has a cascade of inflammatory actions happening, um, when things go a little haywire, messages get... Um, a little discombobulated and the body just doesn't receive the communication that it should. And so when we work on taming the flame, so to speak, and reducing inflammation, we are also by default improving these bodily functions so that things can run more smoothly. Um, your spleen can also help to balance bodily fluid and reduces the stress of all the other organs in your body. And so by being more intentional and focusing on caring for your spleen, it's also going to reduce the burden that other organs might feel if they have to step in and do part of the job that the spleen could or should be doing. Or if you're just not putting the best things in your body, not having the best lifestyle practices, all of those things can deplete our organ function. And so... Um, by supporting our spleen, we are helping to improve the function of all of the other organs in our bodies. So what would be some symptoms if you have an imbalanced spleen or maybe a congested spleen and you kind of wanna know, well, what would I feel? Would I feel anything? Well, the answer is yes, you would, but the tricky part is that they are the same symptoms that can mimic other conditions. So uh, symptoms like sadness or fatigue, um, generally, when we hear fatigue, when I hear fatigue from a client or from a prospect or just anyone in passing, <clears throat> the first thing that I think about is, is there inflammation happening? But also, what are the adrenal glands looking like in the body? Now, that might not be your go-to thought, but when you really peel those layers back, what I'm really asking or really wanting to know is, what is your stress level like? What is your typical lifestyle like, your typical day? Um, is that something that's loaded with stressors that's going to keep you in that cycle of fatigue and irritability? Um, or are there specific things happening that we can start to control and reduce or eliminate? And so uh, sadness, fatigue, these are things that can be symptoms of an imbalanced spleen. Um, also things like poor digestion. If you're not digesting well, 
uh, the first thing that you need to do is make sure that you're clearing out your digestive tract. That's a, a whole other video. Um, but we need to keep that that highway, that internal highway um, open. So that way our main channel of elimination is fully functioning and what is digested, what is digested and what needs to be excreted from the body can do so in an easy manner without recirculating in the body in the form of toxins, which we absolutely do not want. Um, but also if you're someone who feels sort of apathetic, you just don't have a sense of enthusiasm about much. Um, it could be something that you just noticed recently, or it could be something that is a primary characteristic of your personality. If you're someone who just doesn't really get su super excited about um, things and you feel like you should intellectually, but you just don't feel it in your body, <clears throat> that is also a symptom of your spleen needing some support. And then finally, if you just feel defeated, there are some times where, where um, situational things can allow us to feel defeated. But generally speaking, if you're someone who doesn't have as much willpower as you would like, you wish that you had a little more get up and go, you just don't seem to have that intrinsic or internal motivation that you know that you should have or feel like you should have, but no matter what you do, you just feel like you're at a loss. And that is also a symptom of having an imbalanced spleen. So that's something to consider. So what I want to chat about next is um, the type of approach that we would take to supporting our spleen. So we talked about taking herbs or nutrients that will enhance digestion, okay, and elimination, and that is very important. Um, but also you wanna consider making sure that your body is not in a cold or damp state. So the body, the spleen doesn't really like coldness or dampness. So if you ever feel chilled like to the bone or, you know, just really cold and uncomfortable, um, your spleen is feeling uncomfortable as well. So it doesn't mean that you have to be in a hot environment, but it does mean that you should be more intentional around being in room temperature environments, not freezing cold conditions. And if you're someone who works at a job or you go to a place where you spend a lot of time and they keep it freezing in there, make sure that you're adequately dressed, dress in layers specifically for that place, even if you have to kind of strip down when you leave. But that is that is one simple tip that you can take with you to make sure that your body's <clears throat> in homeostasis and feeling comfortable. There's nothing worse than being too hot, um, too cold, or even damp. I definitely have a body constitution that does not enjoy dampness. So when it rains, in the summer, it's a little different because it's hot outside. Um, but when it rains in colder weather, that's really aggravating to my body. And I can tell that my body just does not respond well to that. Um, and that's also a reason why a lot of people who have uh, arthritis and um, other inflammatory conditions and, and painful conditions, um, they tend to feel worse when it rains because of the dampness. And so who knows, perhaps they would also be in need of supporting their spleen. So one thing that I do want to mention about the spleen um, is how it correlates with traditional Chinese medicine. And, you know, we've talked before about the elements, okay, the five elements. Um, <clears throat> and this also represents the traditional Chinese medicine body clock. And so when we look at this clock, I want you to take a look at the morning hour, this orange yellow orange section right here that is what represents the spleen and what that means is that at 10 a.m where are we right there at 10 a.m the spleen is at its at its peak it's at its strongest um uh place and that is a really good time to support your spleen so um by 10 o'clock you've probably eaten breakfast um, but supporting your digestion, taking herbs that are going to um, help reduce inflammation, taking herbs that are going to help uh, enhance digestion. These might be bitter herbs, um, which there are so many to choose from. Um, and in terms of anti-inflammatory herbs, that could look like turmeric, devil's claw, white willow bark. White willow bark contains... Um, salicin, which is where salicylic acid comes from. And so if you're someone who has an allergy to aspirin, then you probably will want to choose a different herb. Um, but white willow bark otherwise is a remarkable anti-inflammatory. Um, <clears throat> another herb 
that is not really touted so much for reducing inflammation, but it works well, is sandalwood. And usually we think about this plant as an oil or a fragrance because it is very popular in perfumery and throughout the ages for millennia, it has been used for its really deep, earthy, beautifully scented. It's just amazing. The scent, the, the fragrance from sandalwood is amazing, but there is more than one variety. And so I like to work with red sandalwood, which is actually a red, it looks like red clay. It is a really vibrant, um, earthy red color. And red sandalwood uh, is really good at reducing inflammation. It's also great for brain health. So um, I typically buy my red sandalwood in the form of a powder, um, but there are different varieties. So I'm going to task you with um, a little bit of research, Googling, look up different variety of varieties of sandalwood, see what you can come across and um, compare their actions because the different varieties of sandalwood can, um, there is going to be a little bit of fluidity in terms of the herbal actions. They Some may be similar, others may have different properties. Um, but at 10 a.m., that's a great time to support your spleen because it's at its strongest. Um, and <clears throat> just to mention what it says on here, uh, on the on the body clock, it says clear thinking. Okay, so your spleen is associated with clear thinking. Now, why would that be? Well, remember the gut brain connection. So anything that's associated with our digestive system that is absolutely going to impact our mental wellness, our brain, our cognitive function, um, and the spleen helps to convert food into energy, and that is really essential. If you're someone who eats a meal and you feel totally tired or lazy, there could be a lot of other things at play, but supporting your spleen is a really good way to start recalibrating your digestive system. Other tools or options would be to take a digestive enzyme um, with each meal, at least until your, your body begins to acclimate to it and starts to <clears throat> digest better on its own. But remember, we have to put our bodies in a position to do things better on its own. If we continue to eat the same foods that are difficult to digest, difficult to pass, and they make you tired, then you would need to rely on something to assist the digestion and assimilation. And the goal is to not need to rely on everything forever. Um, and so... Um, the spleen will help to convert the food into that vital life force, okay? Um, and that's really important for your energy, but it's also important for the subtle bodies of energy, keeping energy flowing through your body. Not the physical energy that you need to go out and run a race, but the life force, the vital energy, the breath in your body that keeps your meridians flowing and your chakras, um, your chakras in a healthy balanced state where energy is moving and, and swirling and doing all that it needs to do. That is essential for your health as well. So I think that, that, that I'm just about done we've covered what the spleen is, how it works, um, <clears throat> things that we can do to support it, taking medicinal herbs that reduce inflammation and that enhance digestion. Anything that supports the liver will generally uh, support the spleen as well. And um, we are going to talk more about specific herbs that will help with inflammation. I feel like that is a really important topic. And um, I would love to hear your feedback if you have questions. So what I want to know from you is what do you plan on doing to pay a little more attention to your spleen? Do you plan to um, eat specific foods or support your digestion through herbal medicine or both? Um, there are also yoga poses and breath work exercises that you can do to help support the health and vitality of all of your organs, including your spleen. And so feel free to do a little digging and research on the interwebs to see what you find and what resonates with you ultimately. So that's it for this video, but I hope you guys enjoyed this quick breakdown on the spleen um, and underrated and under discussed organ that I personally am committing to spending a little more intentional time focusing on myself. So I hope this has been helpful for you guys. I will see you in another video. Bye.